Every adjective has four forms in German. Let's look at one example to show the applicable rules. Good has the following four forms in German. Gut, Gute, Guter and Guten. The ending of the adjective depends upon the gender of the noun and whether it's being used with a definite or an indefinite article. Following tables should make it clear how to use the adjectives for definite articles. The good man. Der gute Mann. It's male and it's singular. Der gute Mann. The good woman. Die gute Frau. It's female and singular, so... Die gute Frau. The good child. Das gute Kind. It's neutral and singular. Das gute Kind. So, once again for the definite articles, but plural. The good men. Die guten Männer. The plural form. Die guten Männer. The good women. Die guten Frauen. Plural. Die guten Frauen. And the good children. Die guten Kinder. It's plural and just the same. Die guten Kinder. Here's a list for indefinite articles, starting with singular forms. A good man. Ein guter Mann. Ein guter Mann. A good woman. Eine gute Frau. Female and singular. Eine gute Frau. A good child. Ein gutes Kind. Ein gutes Kind. And here are the indefinite articles and plural forms. Good men. Gute Männer. Good women. Gute Frauen. And good children. Gute Kinder. You see, the plural form stays the same. Gute Männer. Gute Frauen. Gute Kinder. When you use adjectives, in this case, gut, after sein, which means to be, then it stays in its base form. Gut. For example, the man is good. Der Mann ist gut. The woman is good. Die Frau ist gut. The child is good. Das Kind ist gut. In the example in the previous slide, you must have noticed that the word the is expressed as der, die, or das. And you must be wondering why, because in English the word the remains as it is no matter what. In German, nouns have three different genders, as we've learned. Der, masculine, die, feminine, and das, neutral. It's very important for different grammatical aspects in the German language and you must learn new vocabulary, including the correct article, so that you know how to make further grammatical structures. So once again, der is masculine, die is feminine, and das is neutral. German also has four cases. 
These cases are an important part of German grammar and they are responsible for the endings of indefinite articles, adjectives and when to use which personal noun. German employs different cases to define and describe the noun, pronoun or adjective in the sense. This allows German to have more flexibility in word order, without changing the meaning of the sense. The four cases in German language are nominative, accusative, dative and genitive. The following charts show the four cases with the according definite article der, die or das, the indefinite article and the third person pronouns er, sie, es. First of all, the nominative. Nominative. The subject of a sentence is always in the nominative case. The subject is normally the person or thing performing the action of a verb. In this case, nominative, you will always be able to ask who or what did or is something. Accusative. The accusative case is used for a person, animal or thing which is directly affected by the action of the verb. You can always identify the direct object of a sentence by asking what or whom of the verb. Dative. The dative case is used to show the indirect object of a verb. An indirect object is a person, animal or a thing the action is intended to benefit or harm. You can identify the indirect object and the dative in a sentence by asking to whom or for whom with the subject and verb of the sentence. Last of all, here's the genitive. The genitive case is used to show that something belongs to someone. And you can identify the genitive case by asking whose with the object and the verb of the sense. Here's the list with the definite articles. Nominative. Masculine is der. Neutral is das. Feminine is die and plural is die. The accusative case. Masculine is den. Neuter is das. Feminine is die and the plural is D. The dative case. Masculine is dem. Neuter is dem. Feminine is der. And plural is den. The genitive case. Masculine is des. Neuter is des. Feminine is der. And plural is der. Here are the indefinite articles. It means a or an. The nominative case is, for masculine, ein. Neuter is ein. 
feminine is eine. And of course, there's no plural. The accusative case, masculine, is einen. Neutral is ein. And feminine, eine. The dative case, masculine, einem. Neuter, einem. Feminine, einer. And the genitive case, masculine is eines, neuter is eines, and feminine is Eine. So, this probably is the only table you will need to memorize to learn German. So, the best thing is to go over this again and again till you get it. We will keep getting back to this chart as and when required to check and refresh your memory. The word for, which you already know, means für. So let's look at this sentence. I have a dog for him, but he needs a cat. For in German is für. Ich habe einen Hund für ihn, aber er braucht eine Katze. Einen Hund is the accusative declination of the noun ein Hund. You see, in German there are several verbs that demand a specific declination and this needs to be studied and learned by heart. Here's a short list of some important verbs that demand the accusative. Haben To have Wollen to want, suchen, to search, finden, to find, essen, to eat, and also trinken, to drink. There are more of these words, but these will do for the moment. Another sentence. I have a dog for him, but he wants a cat. It can be translated as Ich habe einen Hund für ihn, aber er will eine Katze. New word. To speak in German is Sprechen. Before we proceed further, you need to know three words. We, which means wir. You, as in the second person plural, means ihr. And they, which means sie. Here are the conjugations of the verb to speak. I speak. Ich spreche. You speak. Du sprichst. He, she, it speaks. Er, sie, es spricht. We speak. Wir sprechen. You all speak. Ihr sprecht. They speak. Sie sprechen. We shall use all these forms as we proceed ahead. Look at this sentence. I speak English. You just learned that I speak means ich spreche. Therefore the sentence is ich spreche English. Notice that in German the sh sounds needs a C added between the two letters. So... English becomes English. Another sentence. 
Do you speak English? You can see that this is a question. Let's break down the sentence. Do you speak? Sprichst du? English. English. In German, you don't need an auxiliary to form a question. All you have to do is invert the personal pronoun and the verb. So, I speak is a statement. Ich spreche. To say, do I speak, you simply invert the two words. Spreche ich? So, the sentence in German is Sprichst du Englisch? Now see what you make of this sentence. You don't speak English? It's a question again. Don't you speak? Remember the rule of ne Remember the rule of negation in German. A verb followed by nicht for adjectives and by kein for nouns. English, obviously, is a noun. So, du sprichst kein Englisch? Two new words. Little means ein wenig when you're talking about a quantity or klein when you use it for small as an adjective. Let us look at a few sentences to understand the difference. I speak a little English. Ich spreche ein wenig Englisch. Another sentence. I have a small house. House in German is das Haus. So it is ich habe ein kleines Haus. Kleines Haus. Remember, because the verb habe demands the accusative declination and das Haus is neutral, the neutral declination of the indefinite article is es. And so it's ich habe ein kleines Haus. A new word. To see. In German it's sehen. I want to see him tomorrow. I want. Ich will. See him. Ihn sehen. Tomorrow. Morgen. Ich will ihn morgen sehen. Here we need to look at the German sentence structure quickly. The German sentence structure is quite flexible, but in general it's always the following. Subject, main verb, indirect object, time, place, direct object, and second verb. So in this case, ich will ihn morgen sehen. Ich will is the subject and the main verb. Morgen is the time. Sehen is the second verb. I want to see you today. In this sentence we are using a new word, which is today, and it means heute. I want to see you today. Ich will dich heute sehen. Remember, there are certain verbs that demand an accusative declination also of the personal pronoun. Nominative declination of the personal pronouns. Ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie. The dative declination of the personal pronouns is mir, dir, ihm, ihr, ihm, uns, euch, ihnen. 
the accusative declination of the personal pronouns is mich, dich, ihn, sie, es, uns, euch, sie. See you is dich sehen. See him is ihn sehen. And see them is sie sehen. Now here is an expression. I'm going to. Which in German is ich gehe nach when we're talking about physical movement to a place. You're going to. Du gehst nach. He's going to. Er geht nach. We're going to. Wir gehen nach. You all are going to. Ihr geht nach. They are going to. Sie gehen nach. Here's an example of how to use this structure. I'm going to London. Ich gehe nach London. Another small sentence. Are they going to London? Since it is a question, Sie gehen in German is inverted. Gehen Sie? Therefore, the sentence is Gehen Sie nach London? The same sentence in a different form. They are going to London. Please note that this is not a question. So the translation is Sie gehen nach London. Note that in German the intonation of a question is different from English. The intonation of a question has a rising end, meaning the end of the sentence is spoken in a higher tone. Gehen Sie nach London? Going to, followed by a verb as a future form, in German is werden followed by the verb. So, I'm going to is ich werde. You're going to is du wirst. He, she, it is going to is er, sie, es wird. We're going to is wir werden. And you all are going to is ihr werdet. And last but not least, they are going to is sie werden. <laughs>